I was in Dubai um, on a desert safari just outside of Dubai, blowing a head penis to be who I really want to be. So it was about a hundred women in total. A belly dancer and What's up, everybody? I'm Benjamin Jenks. I have the honor of talking to my good buddy, uh, Niall Doherty from Disrupting the Ravelment. You know, whenever I say Disrupting the Ravelment in my mind, Niall, it's like I put on this, like, what I think would be an Irish accent. Disrupting the Ravelment. But yeah, trains, buses, boats. Uh, left Ireland 10 months ago and made it to Kathmandu. Cripplingly shy. When I was 17 years old, there was uh, this girl that I liked. I saw her, and I, I just went like bright red. And, you know, I didn't say anything to her. Nothing. Not even like what time is it? You know, I was so terrified. If you looked at an attractive woman, you'd burst into flames. Like, but then they beat themselves up about being shy. I found alcohol like wow. This this gives me this courage now. I can go dancing and not care if anybody was looking at me or if I look stupid. Why would I go back? I'm saving tons of money. I'm having loads of fun. I just really don't miss alcohol. Oh, I wish I wasn't so shy. Why am I such a loser? Why can't I just go talk to her? It's okay that I'm shy. Um, I don't have to be like this forever. I'll gradually work on it. It's gonna be okay, man. Uh, when I was a baby, I had a I had to have an operation to remove a twisted testicle. It's like, oh, you mean I'm different from all the other boys? A miserable, bitter man if I didn't do something about this. So I decided I'd get cosmetic surgery. I'm some super stud, you know, once I had two instead of one. I'm just a shy guy, that's who I am. I guess that's who I'll always be. I just refused to accept that. I was like, no, I can be who I really want to be. I was just terrified of like, any kind of change, any kind of break from my routine, even though my routine was stupid, and go talk to that person over there, make a new friend, make an effort. Like, I felt like I was the life and soul of the, the party, <laughs> you know, and I was you just kind of shrug them off at, at some stage. You're just like, oh, here's another one, no big deal, I've, I've gone through this before. Well, flirting, to put it in one word, was expressing my sexuality. I, I was terrified of that. If I, you got stuck so. in the friend zone, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all the time, man. So it was about a hundred women in total. Walking up to random girls in the street, and next thing you know, I'm hanging out with them for five phone numbers from girls that I would have considered way out of my league. Didn't like being one of those guys who would see a pretty girl and then it had this regret, you know, and it just, after a while, you pass up enough of, the, enough of those opportunities and it really starts to wear on you. And I didn't the weight of that, of this kind of sexual repression until I kind of broke through it in Amsterdam. And then I was like, wow. Actually, I, uh, I, I, I don't need directions. I, I, I touch you were, touch you were cute. Like, you know, I was on and like, I was like a magnet. And immediately, she kind of just veered off away from me and started shouting for her friend as if I was like a rapist or something. <laughs> they say you never really learn something until your behavior changes, which I absolutely agree with. Before that, you just know something. But how it actually works is that you go and do the thing you're afraid of and then the fear subsides me or I'm going to try and impress them, it never ever ever goes as well as when you go in with the mindset of, I'm just going to have fun here and see what happens. You just stop caring. You're like, I don't need this person to approve of me. You're actually looking for the opposite. If in doubt, in like a social situation, just get really honest. Let's say you're on a Skype call with this guy who hitchhiking and he's supposed to ask you a question, but he doesn't say anything. Uh, I would probably say, uh, man, does What's with the silence? This is kind of awkward. If there's an elephant in the room, you should introduce them. Shit, that was a really awkward hug. That, that was, might have been the worst hug I've ever given anybody. Let's, let's try that again. Hey, I uh, don't think it's the wrong way or anything, but I thought you were really cute and I just wanted to go talk to you for a few minutes. I was in Dubai um, on a desert safari just outside of Dubai. A belly dancer and you can get food and everything. So now, I'm not sure if you've ever seen slug sex. You can see it on YouTube. Uh, leopard slugs in particular. But it sounds horrible, but if you're blowing a head penis, you shouldn't say that to girls you just met. It's, it's really weird. It doesn't mean they're a bad person, it's just that you're not on the same wavelength. It's because that's just like the tip of my weird iceberg. I, I mean, I find it easy to meet people now, but I'm not always in social mode. New here, I touch with who I want to introduce myself, and you know, just ask some questions, just be curious, be interested in them. Um, and if in doubt, just, just, just be really honest with people. And generally, in my experience, good things happen when you do that. Thanks a million for having me, Benjamin. Have a good one. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.